everyone and welcome to Movie Fridays, where even after death we still honor the actors and actresses that brought us the movies that we love even to this very day. And today we're going to be honoring Debbie Reynolds, uh, one of the actresses who was surprisingly uh, one of the relatives of Carrie Fisher, who died literally a day after the death of Carrie Fisher. And she's been in a lot of movies, uh, one of them I actually know of, How the West Was Won and Charlotte's Web from 1973. But the movie we're actually going to take a look at today is actually one she's in, one of my favorite musicals. And that musical is, of course, from 1952, Singing in the Rain. This pretty much here is one of my favorite musicals of all time. If pretty much you were to put the CD on, or pretty much if I were to flip on to Turner Classic Movies, or see it up on the big screen, like pretty much I've done it this year on TCM's big screen classics, I pretty much would sing along with the music on here. I'd enjoy Make em Laugh, and Singing in the Rain, and a lot of the other songs that are put in here, but I don't want to give the, a lot of the other songs away, and you've got to listen to the songs. They are pretty amazing. But let's get on to the story before I give them away here. Our main characters, Gene Kelly and Don O'Connor, one of them is Don Lockwood, which I think is uh, Gene Kelly, and of course uh, Gene Kelly is the actor turn is an, a musician turned actor, and he works alongside an actress named Lena. And of course, they wind up, of course, pairing with each other for this really, for pretty much what basically America calls the cutest couple along the silent film era. But of course, right around the almost around that era, there is the beginning of the sound era, as one of others is, of course, beginning to experiment with a little something called sound. Which, of course, they're beginning with a little film called The Jazz Singer. But pretty much soon afterwards, every single one of Hollywood followed afterwards, including Monumental Pictures, as, of course, the actors and actresses have to follow pursuit in, of course, dubbing all of their dialogue. Which, of course, it's not very easy for Lena, because she's kind of a ditz. But, of course, along the way, they meet up with another friend, well, that being Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor, where they meet up with Debbie Reynolds' character. Which, along the way, they get some sort of an idea after a preview screening to, of course, dub in the dialogue without Lena knowing about it. Will they succeed in the end, and or will the movie be destroyed? Pretty much you'll have to see it and find out. But here's what I have to say about it before you actually go off to see it, and let me give you a bit of fun facts while I'm talking about this film right now. Pretty much, I, I love the musical numbers. Everything in the film is really really amazing, and the Technicolor is fantastic. It really pops out from everything else. And definitely the dance and music, they go alongside each other pretty well. The one thing I'm surprised of, though, is that Donald O'Connor, who was doing the musical sequence for Make Em Laugh, which I think took place at somewhere around one or two-fourths of the film, basically, of course, at the time, was doing cigarettes at the time, which, for actors, was a common thing back then. Normally, actors usually smoked way back then. It wasn't common for actors nowadays to not smoke. Or smoke, depending on your choice. But... Uh, Don O'Connor, who did the musical number, according to the IMDb article on your trivia, basically said he was smoking four packs of cigarettes a day, and getting up on those walls for the musical numbers were killing him. 
I mean, pretty much when he did, like, make them laugh, and pretty much he did all those wall jumps and everything, doing all those stunts and whatnot, and he fell down and whatnot, I think he literally passed out. Because I think literally... Who knows how much breath is taken out of you when you're smoking a whole pack of cigarettes. And it's not very easy to do that, especially if you're doing a lot of jumps and kicks and everything, or dancing around. It's, it's not very easy. And of course I could be quoting the trivia wrong, but... It's very interesting to know that, especially when it's a film like Singing in the Rain, especially when actors used to smoke way back when. The, uh, another thing that I found interesting about this film is that I think they sort of kind of did a, a nod to how they would dub films way back when. Because, remember this... The jazz singer didn't take off, or these talking pictures didn't take off until, like, somewhere around the late 30s, early 40s. So, by the time that, you know, jazz singer came out, it was a new thing, but it was uncommon in Hollywood, but it wasn't too big of a success for Hollywood to catch on or theaters to put in sound equipment. It was later on that Warner Brothers and MGM and Paramount, all these other studios, started putting in the equipment necessary for them to, you know, make the films necessary for sound and everything. for them to pop out with all these sound effects and everything. So, it's sort of kind of a bit inaccurate to how the jazz singer is kind of treated in the movie and how sound is a bit treated, but... yeah, does kind of get you a bit interested in film history and how Hollywood history is put out. But it also does kind of, I think, do a bit of a nod to how films are dubbed, I think. Because I think it's like somewhere around that point when they're dubbing the movie. And this is a minor spoiler, so kind of sort of mute if you wanted to, if you actually want to see the movie for yourself. It is on Blu-ray, but it's also, it also kind of airs occasionally on Turner Classic Movies. I think how they would actually dub the film some of the time is that if the audio came out wrong part of the time, they would actually grab the actors in, in like some sort of sound booth, and then they would redub the dialogue. I think that's how they did it way back when. I could be wrong because I didn't look back into film history from way back when, but I think that's how they did it. I could be wrong. With that said, does Singing in the Rain really stand out as a musical, as well as a history upon how films are created? I do say, yes. It is a really fantastic musical, and I do recommend it to everybody. It's really, really, really amazing. Every single musical number, as I said, is really toe-tappingly amazing. The songs in it, I mean, pretty much, you could pick up the soundtrack either on Amazon or iTunes or wherever, and pretty much you'll enjoy it. I mean, heck, you could even watch the thing on Turner Classic Movies or pick up the film on Blu-ray or whatever, and pretty much for yourself, you'll find yourself enjoying the movie for all second purposes. It's a really amazing film, and pretty much, I think, it got me to enjoy movies even more. Despite the fact that it is a musical.
Not that I hate musicals either way, but still, wonderful musical, even then. Because I do say that on the recommendation scale, with everything that Debbie Reynolds, Donald O'Connor, Gene Kelly, and that everything was put into the production of this film, I give that Singing in the Rain is highly, highly recommended. It's a fantastic musical that deserves much more attention in the mainstream. I mean, we're getting surrounded by a lot of things out there, and pretty much, especially with the passing of, you know, Debbie Reynolds and everything, I mean, pretty much at the beginning of this video you've seen, I've pretty much this video is tribute of her. This movie, I highly recommend to anybody who wants to see a good movie with her in it. Of course, there are other movies with her I may be passing out on, but if you want to see a movie featuring her, pretty much this movie is most definitely up the alley if you want to see her in a wonderful, wonderful musical. Her dance is amazing, the music is fantastic, and pretty much, it's an overall amazing film for when it came out in 1952. Pick it up if you haven't seen it yet. So, with that in mind, if you've seen Singing in the Rain, tell me what you thought of it down in the comments, and, of course, if you enjoyed the movie review, well... And if you also want to support me, and as well as want to build the library, and also have some recommendations of some movies you want me to review by the end of the month or whatever, pretty much uh, support me on Patreon, and of course, you'll be entered in a movie raffle via Patreon at patreon.com slash guy, and check out some cool other perks while you're there, which, of course... It will also go to helping build a bigger, better show. Well, of course, with that in mind, I'm the Furb Guy, and I'll see you guys for the next movie. But also, rest in peace, Debbie Reynolds. You're a wonderful, beautiful, amazing actress. <laughs>